Hello everyone, welcome to an informational presentation on the first tech challenge. Today we're going to be talking about what FTC is and how you can get involved. So the company that organizes the first tech challenge is called FIRST and it's a global organization that provides many students with STEM education. Primitive Data Robotics participates in the FIRST tech challenge, which is one of four leagues that first runs. This year's season, the game is called Ultimate Goal, and the task for the robots to complete is to drive around and collect small foam rings and fling them into a goal positioned a few feet off the ground. We'll go a little bit more in depth about the parameters and gameplay, but to learn more about first, visit their website at firstinspires.org. That'll be in the description of this video. First has also made adaptations to their program for this year to account for COVID-19 safety precautions, such as virtual competitions. We'll get into that later. So the competition season is roughly aligned with the school year, and a new game is revealed at the beginning of each season in September. And the game reveal will tell teams how they need to design, build, and program their robots in order to complete the tasks in the game. And depending on how well teams perform, they can advance to the next competition. And the order of competition goes qualifiers, regionals, and then if a team wins regionals, they go right to the world championships. So at each competition, two teams compete with each other to form an alliance they compete against another alliance and their robots are on the same playing field with the other three robots and they try and get the most points in that game but for virtual competitions this year teams perform their matches individually and they submit their own scores so if a team gains the most points in their match they will win that match and they can advance but a team can also win an award for good community service or innovation, and if a team gains an award, they also advance to the next competition. Here is a video explaining the ultimate goal game for this year. A team consists of up to two driver operators, a coach, a human player, and a robot. The robot must be built from materials specified in the game manual and fit within an 18-inch sizing tool, but may expand after the match begins. Each match is played with four randomly selected teams, two per alliance. Each alliance is allowed only one human player. Your opponents for one match may be your partners for another. The game is played on a 12-foot square playing field with a foam tile floor and one-foot high walls. Five unique navigation images are located around the field perimeter. At one end are two tower goals, each containing three alliance-specific goals with return routes. Between the two tower goals are three red and three blue power shot targets. There are two red and two blue taped start lines, and three red and three blue target zone goals. And a white launch line divides the field. Outside of the field walls are the two alliance stations and two human player stations. The primary game element is a ring, approximately five inches in diameter and three quarters of an inch thick. A match is played with 20 rings. There are two red and two blue wobble goals. These can have rings scored onto them and can be moved for additional scoring. Before each match, teams place their robots on the field, touching the front wall and over one of their alliance's starting lines. Each robot must be touching or be in possession of a wobble goal. A robot may possess or touch up to three rings. 
After the robots are in position, field personnel will randomize the starter stacks into one of three configurations. This determines which target zone goal is active in the autonomous period. Zero, one, or four rings correspond to target zone goals A, B, or C, respectively. Unused rings are stored in the human player stations to be deployed to the field at the start of the driver controlled period. The players and field are ready. Each match begins with a 30 second autonomous period. During this period, there are a number of ways for teams to score using only pre-programmed instructions and sensor inputs. Delivering a wobble goal to the correct target zone earns the Alliance 15 points. A robot parked over the launch line earns 5 points. Each ring launched or placed into the low goal earns 3 points. A ring launched into the mid goal earns 6 points, and launching into the high goal earns 12 points. Robots earn 15 points for each power shot target knocked down. Robots must be completely within the launch zone to launch rings into the mid goal, high goal, or power shot targets. Following the autonomous period is the two minute driver controlled period. During the driver controlled period, Human players are expected to return rings to the playing field, as well as reset power shot targets. Each ring launched or placed into the low goal earns two points. A ring launched into the mid goal earns four points. However, rings launched into the opposing alliance's goal earn points for their alliance. A ring launched into the high goal earns 6 points. The last 30 seconds of the driver controlled period is the end game. During this time, robots may continue scoring rings, but there are also ways to earn bonus points. Each knocked down power shot target earns 15 points. Returning a wobble goal to the start line earns 5 points. Each ring fully supported by the wobble goal earns five points. If a robot lifts a wobble goal over the front wall into the drop zone, its alliance earns 20 points. There are many ways to score in ultimate goal, but there are also rules that if not followed will deduct points from your alliance. For example, a robot may not block another for an extended period. A robot may not possess more than three rings at a time. A robot may not launch rings over the side or front perimeter walls. A robot may not intentionally tip another robot at any time. This has been a brief summary of the Ultimate Goal game. For complete rules, please read the entire game manual and check the Q&A forum. For so FTC teams can have up to 15 people on them with a minimum of one person per team, but the size of the team does not correlate with how well the team will do. There are many good teams that have just two or three people on them. And as you can see in the photo on the right, the first Lego league is for kids younger or that are too young to be in the first tech challenge. The first Lego league is with Legos and there's it's a lot simpler than the first tech challenge. And then on the right of the first tech challenge, there's the first robotics competition, which teams are generally bigger. There's more money involved. The robots are bigger and more complex. So why join FDC Robotics? Well, when you're on a team, it strengthens your leadership, your social interaction. You build relationships with other team members and between teams too and it teaches engineering and communication skills and it also improves planning skills it takes a lot of planning to design and then build a robot and there is actually some money involved the league above FTC FRC has made 30 million dollars in scholarships available to the participants and it's also a lot of fun how do you join a team well you can make your own you need to find 
your region's affiliate partner or a first senior mentor, they will help you. Then you need to find at least two adults willing to be coaches for the team. Then you need to register your team. There is a deadline. And then you need to find team members. You could be alone, but it's always better to have friends that you can work with. And then you need to get some money because it can be expensive to build a robot from the ground up. A good way to fundraise is to ask local businesses for sponsorships or apply for grants. You can also join an existing team. You can find one that is nearby. There are a lot of resources that allow you to look up and find nearby teams based on your area code. I will put a link to one in the description. Also many high schools have their own robotics team. And then you reach out to the team with either a resume or a statement of interest. And if they let you in, they'll let you know, then you're on that team. But there are usually many teams in an area, so don't be too sad if you don't make the team that you want to be on because there's probably another. Thank you for watching. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to email us at ftcprimitivedata at gmail.com. That will also be in the description. Thank you.